Hey guys, it's Avengel. Welcome back to the channel. And yes, you can see it here on my screen. Milvis' Porter is here with the Phase 2 update that it promised. They were delayed, and it is now here. Now, if you already own it, you should be getting an email from Milvis for this. And we get their gorgeous, gorgeous Porter with analog gauges. Let me grab my controller here. Let's go outside, I think. Okay, so if I get this right... There we go. Nice and slow. A little bit too low down. So obviously this is their shut up livery. I like this one a bit. It looks the same as the other porter, but now we have these beautiful big floats. And... Oh. This is a straight float version. Uh, so this isn't going to work for our little trip. We'll take a look at it though while we're here, because I thought this was amphibian. It's not. It's straight floats. If you look here... You will see all the versions we get now. We have a float, tundra, and wheeled version, which can take skis with both glass and analog, giving us all the options we could possibly want. We'll be back in a second when I have something that can take off from this runway. Okay, so we're back in the cockpit now, and something slightly more suited that has wheels. Yes. So we're here in the porter, and this should start up exactly like any porter you would expect it to start. We're going to get that going. We're going to take a little trip to my home, because I now have an official home in the flight sim world. Thank you to the wonderful, wonderful scenery developer that is, where is he, A51 Piefly. I will put a link to this in the description. He's done this and a bunch of other amazing sceneries on flightsim.to. You can get copies of those and Angel's Lookout. Yes. Or Angel's Rest. I forget which one it's called, but you'll, you'll see it in the description. But it's gorgeous. He made me my own little home in the wilderness. And it's a beautiful ranch up in a hanging valley which I love because it's glacial. It's wonderful. I have a water runway. I have a dirt runway, 2,000 feet. I have a ranch house. Hangars for all my aircraft. It's wonderful. But you could also download it and use it if you want. Let's get this thing going, shall we? So our power system is on. Let's make sure everything's set correctly here. Uh, da, 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 da. Pull you back to flight or ground idle. Let's pull you back to cut off. Let's make sure our fuel is turned on. Let's make sure our aux pump is on here. Everything's looking good on the aircraft. Let's turn on the transponder. Lights are set as we need them to be. Okay. Let's boot this baby up, shall we? So we'll go to front 19 on uh, the RPM. We'll wait for the N1 to come up. And once it does, we're going to give it a bit of motion lotion. And we'll get a good ignition. Give it a little fuel. And we should be started up in no time whatsoever. Now, obviously, we have, which I believe is new with the update 2, we have full door control. So we can toggle both rear doors here from, as the sim is getting really weird at the moment. I don't know why it keeps doing this. But we can now toggle both doors from the outside. Not just the end, obviously. You can't fully open that one, given that it's... Uh, well, oh, there we go. The sim being this stuttery is incredibly annoying. It does it sometimes, it doesn't do it at others, and it'll never do it again. Either way, we're spooled up, we're good to go here, so let's knock that off. Let's turn my head on here. And I'm just going to adjust my seating position slightly. And get ourselves turned around and get ourselves out of here at Bella Coola. Come on, let's go. Swing the nose. Not chop up the ground crew. That would be a bad idea. There we go. Okay, let's raise my head up here, see where I'm going. We'll give it uh, one notch on takeoff. We'll get ourselves set up here for our departure. We'll be turning around once we depart, so it should be a nice easy takeoff. Take off over the water, and around we go. Okay, so full forward, everything's good to go. Forgot to turn off my ignition, which I should do now. And the aux pumps, there we go. And she wants to get up in the air already. 
That's because we're light, we have no cargo on board, so it makes a big difference in her performance. In fact, we'll take off and land, turn this way to the left. Got my room in the valley. Airspeed is good for a turn straight away. Very powerful, the Porter. I must say, the analog one is really doing it for me. I'm, I, I enjoyed their other version with the glass. I really didn't like it, though, personally. I'm not a big glass fan, especially when it comes to, bullet, uh, to bush planes like this one. I've always had seen the Porter in my mind as a steam instrument aircraft. It's always been that way. Sure, they can do glass now, and we've got things like the Kodiak, which is like an iPod with wings, but the Porter is something very distinctly different, and I really, really like it. Look at our... Torque's got a bit nuts there. It's... There we go. That should be about right. Okay. That's looking good. Okay, so we're on our way now. We follow the valley around here to the right, and we get there in no time at all. In fact, according to this, it's going to be about 12 minutes, so we should be good. But that's the direct route. Little choppy up here today. But not terribly bad. The aircraft are very, very, very tame in a lot of conditions, except when the sim decides it wants to really choke you out with the wind. But... Obviously, you see we've got different versions. We have the straight floats, and I'm actually kind of glad that I found out it's a straight float. We don't have many of those in the sim. And with the things like Return to Misty Moorings and way more float airports available on the, uh, the wonderful third-party websites, who needs wheels anyway? It's just absolute cosmic luck that we get the beaver and a float porter in winter. Which is not float season in the north. <laughs> but either way, we'll get to experience that at some point soon, I'm very sure. It's a very short journey. We just kick right at the end of the valley here, and we are right there. But otherwise, in terms of its overall performance, other than some tweaks on the tablet, as we saw a moment ago, click spots could be a little irritating. Uh, as we see here, of course, we still have our usual fuel. We still have our passenger and cargo, which does visually load the aircraft. We'll not change it right now. But we can configure to skydiving as well. Or passenger, like this. And we can hide our co-pilot, which I'm going to do for now, because Karen's annoying. And that's TeamSpeak in the background, which I'm just going to close, because I didn't realize I had my sound still on. Excellent. We can also turn off our radios entirely and have a blank panel. Which is kind of cool. Now, this does not have support for things like the GTN 750s and 430s or 750s or NXIs that I'm aware of. Obviously, their 310 does. Maybe this will. I don't know. But the option of blank with no radios seems strange. Obviously, some aircraft did fly without that. Obviously, you typically wouldn't. And the click spots are technically still there. We'll leave these turned on for the sake of uh, arguments. Obviously, we've got our usual exhaust covers, intake covers, prop tie downs, pitot cover, tie down blocks, and shocks. Which are useful, of course. Nice visual candy. You can reset the doors after jettisoning them. Obviously, you can toggle them off from in here. Very useful to have. Now, the other question is can I toggle them from here? Yes, I can. What I like, though, is that you can't open the doors that actually hinge. They will not open. But the sliding door, you can. Fully. That's pretty cool. There we go. I like you can put the seat bags down, actually. That's quite nice. Okay, there we go. So we're off the GPS track, which is just there for reference, really. It's the first time I've flown up to my new home. I've taken off from there a couple of times and flown around, but it is the first time I've actually got the chance to fly to it. Now, what's the fuss? Now, we did say that Milviz uh, will be changing the pricing once it hits Phase 2, so that's a given. Uh, phase 1 was a lower price. You get Phase 2 as a free update if you got it then. Um, largely, I will say I personally bought it for Phase 2, Stage 2 which is analog and float, etc. Yeah. 
I like this. In fact, once we get to my little spot, we're going to do a quick takeoff and landing with the float version on the lake, just so you can see how it behaves. But uh, we should be there in about eight or so minutes and be on the ground. No problems whatsoever. So we'll take a look at both those variants once we get there. Overall, I mean, these are, of course, the working title for 3530. Uh, no need to use the stock Milvis, uh enhanced version, shall we say, of the G1000. With this, with the analog version, you can use this working title GPS. There's no issue whatsoever. And they function just great. Instrumentation is fluid and well behaved as I'd expect. I'm looking forward to seeing what they do next. Obviously, we've had the Porter, their first one. We've had the uh, Corsair, which I never tried myself. I just don't like the Corsair. It's probably going to get me some hatred, but not my favorite American World War II carrier based fighter. That would be the F6. Yeah. Discuss in the comments. <laughs> Uh, but when it comes to their aircraft, of course, the 310, and we had the Beaver that came out as part of the uh, 40th anniversary. Need to get some altitude here to get up to uh, Angel's Lookout, or Angel's Rest. I think it's Angel's Rest. The Beaver, obviously, is by Milvis or Blackbird. Blackbird, as they're called now. And I... I still count that as one of their, their their crowning projects so far because even though it's free, you know, once you add the the Jonks pack, the the 40th anniversary adventure pack, that thing becomes as good as one of this that you paid for. You've got all of the gubbins of the inside coupled with the fact you now have a stunningly beautiful beaver. Obviously, it doesn't have the cargo options, which is a shame. And I suspect if we'd gotten this or the beaver from Blackbird we'd have had those same functionalities. So it's a bit sad, but it's not the end of the world. Now, where am I turning down? That's the question. Oh, keep going. GPS will tell me when I need to turn. Take the next left. So we'll get some altitude here. I need about five and a half thousand feet to get into uh, Angel's Rest. It's up in a hanging glacial valley here. This would be a main valley that a glacier would have come down. In fact, this would have caused this valley. Um, as you see, it's got the very steep sides with the flattened, rounded bottom. Typically a sign of a glacial erosion. You'll typically have the glaciers coming down from the higher peaks and you'll have them joining into lower, bigger glaciers. But like tributaries feed into main rivers now. The same thing occurred with ice. But what you'll also get are hanging valleys. That's where a glacier has come down from a mountain later, once another one's passing, at a higher altitude, and you'll see it feeds down into the main glacier. But because it's feeding down into that one, it's a shorter uh, tributary branch, we'll call it. It doesn't erode all the way down, so you get a stepped valley. So you have a little valley that's halfway up a valley. They look great. In fact, we should be coming up on things very soon right now about five minutes out pretty sure we're looking just over here right there but either way I think this has revitalized my love for the Porter and maybe this is a smart way to do things because you release an aircraft people enjoy it and then you release it almost a whole new version of the aircraft which is free if you already own it and Wow it's a whole new plane again. Not a terrible idea. Twice the enjoyment. But at the same time, obviously, not everyone would have bought that one. They didn't like the glass. That's fair enough. I, I didn't mind it. I didn't like it, but I didn't mind it. Do these still work? They do. There we go. Ooh. Get off my aeroplane. Whee! Are you... How do I get you open? I forget I have to push it somewhere, don't I? Pretty sure I click something to open it. There we go. Bye! And now we have a very airy cockpit. Which is quite surreal in a fixed wing aircraft that I can have this much of an open cockpit. Yeah, welcome to this part of the river. It gets a bit derpy in sections where it goes up and down. Wish that could be fixed one day, but of course we can go to our tablet. When I can click the right spot. Interesting bug.
Why can I not close you? Let's close that. Ah, right. Well, you have to reset it, you have to close it physically again. That's a bit of a meme. But, uh, hey, this is where we test things. We want to work out what's going wrong and what's behaving why. Okay, we're coming up here on Angel's Rest. In fact, it's just there. You can just about see it. So we need to start climbing here. Put a bit of power in here. Take us up a notch. These aren't the fastest aircraft, but they do a lot of work. And they can get in and out of awfully tight places. Which is a big advantage. So we'll just climb here about a thousand feet a minute. We should have us arriving just at the right altitude here. To get into the ranch. We'll have no qualms whatsoever once we get there. I must say it flies exactly the way I expected it to from the previous version, but realistically that part of the aircraft hasn't changed. It's very much the same aircraft in terms of its handling and behaviour and startup. All that's changed is the instrument panels, but I really like that because to me this feels older now, or at least more of a workhorse. Obviously these still exist in this format and the glass ones also exist, but I don't know, it always seems like such a rugged aircraft. Uh, it's the Gaz 66 of, of aircraft, which is a Russian off-road track. Very common in the Slavic countries and the East. Uh, they are a little rugged four-wheel drive that's on a lifted chassis. It can go anywhere, basically, and carry anything. This is the same, realistically. And that turboprop engine really helps her go for it. Okay, so this will be us up here on the left. So once we get level, we'll turn in and make our run. What's our current altitude? We are not high enough up yet. I don't think. Let's keep climbing. I think it's down there. But the worry is it'll be higher up. I think it's a bit higher up still. We're too low. So we have to climb a lot more yet to reach that shelf level almost. I think we need to get to about here to get up there, which I think I still need about five and a half thousand, so we'll keep about a thousand feet per minute in. And that should get us into the valley. No trouble whatsoever. It's definitely the highest altitude home I've ever had. This is my first arrival. I've taken off a few times. I've never landed there, so <laughs> we'll learn together. And I'm absolutely fine with that. Doing flow tops at five and a half thousand feet, they'll be interesting, but we have a lake for it, so might as well. Okay. That's me there, I think. So we'll maintain the climb. We'll just start to turn slightly. Yeah, this will be us. That looks like me. Okay, wonderful. Gorgeous little spot he found, actually. I don't know how we found this location, but it is stunning. It's one of the weirdest approaches to an airport. That in fact I'm having to climb to, to land. <laughs> but I can dig it. So we'll maintain this climb until we get a good visual down below. And work out what we're doing. So the lake will be there in front of us, just left of our nose now. And we need to be just to the right of that. But there's the strip there. So I'm going to pull the power back here, drop my nose down. This ends up being quite a shallow approach. Prop full forward, condition's good. One notch flaps. Back to idle here to lose some speed. A little bit more power. Second notch flaps. Keep the nose level here, watch out for the trees and approach. If this was really my ranch, I would knock some of those trees down in the foreground. Give myself a little bit more of an open approach, considering it's higher altitude. Obviously, 2,000 feet doesn't end up being exactly a ton once you're at this kind of level. It's not super high, but it's not low either. There's my dock and my lake. That should be an interesting amount of room to work with. Wind's good from this direction. Oh, we, we might have an issue here. So 
Let's go to reverse here. We're going to need that. Yeah, we did that. Back to idle. And bring her on in. The beautiful meadows of Angel's Rest. Oh, brakes, 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 brakes. Let's not take out the flowers. My lovely ranch house there. A little bit too much power there. We'll take it to the hangar or parker and we'll jump in the float version here. Oh, there, there we go. A little bit of brakes. Put the parking brake on and we'll take a look at the, uh, the house before we go. So what do we have? Well, we have the gorgeous mountain just up above us here. Glacial Lake just there. It'd be nice for swimming in the summer. The ranch house and some outbuildings and the trailer where I keep uh, Baldrick. A little pathway down to the lake there for swimming. It's got 2,000 feet of a kind of grass strip here. Grass and dirt coupled with the lake and our jetty. And we'll hopefully be over there in just a minute and try out the float porter and see how she behaves so we'll see you in a second so we're here in the aircraft i'm going to turn off uh, karen again now unlike the beaver we do not have an anchor we can turn our weather radar pod on we can open the doors but we have no anchor function it may simply be tied to that but we don't know uh we are staying in a relatively straight place though so there is that Flying the Argentinian version here because it's got a uh, it's got a shark mouth and I quite like shark mouths. So she sits lovely in the water so far. Obviously, it's the porter as we knew before. There's my rib for boating around a very very small lake, of course, and hangar over there for the seaplanes. Usually the amphibians, but we'll go for that. So we showed her earlier on when we were looking at the aircraft, but straight floats pretty simple to go with. Uh, We'll take a quick look back at the cargo page, just in case there is anything else we can add. So we can do passengers cargo. Let's load it down with freight for a second to see what actually appears here. So it's just straight freight in there. Nothing on the floats. Okay. I'm not going to take off from this uh, lake with that much payload on board because that's going to be a problem. So I do not see any options for anything external other than the external fuel tanks, which we'll take off again just for safety's sake of getting off this lake and on again. Uh, doors, blank panel, usual stuff. Unfortunately, there does not appear to be anything to go on the pontoons. And there is no overt anchor function, although we have not moved since we've been on the water. So obviously we're going to move the second we start uh, the engine here. So I need to remember where my water rudder is located. Is that you? That's a tailwheel lock. I don't have a tailwheel. Where is the water rudder on this one? There is a manual. Haven't read it. Do you expect anything less? I need the porter. Why would I need to go and look at the manual? We'll, we'll make it work. So let's make sure this is all good to go. Ready to start up. That's recognized as being off. That is to idle. That is to low condition. Boost on, ignition and starter on. Fuel to on. Okay, spooling, 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 coming up. Give her the juice. And the fact we still haven't moved makes me think the water, the parking brake is behaving like an anchor because we should have moved this is already providing power basically okay let's turn this off a second and experiment no not yet but I will however use flow to give me a quick function for this I'm going to need the water rudder. 
Where is it? So that would be under controls. So let's wait and balance with that for now. There we go, water run is down. So let's make ourselves a bit of room here on the lake. We'll quickly open these if you want to click that, it's right there. That is off, right? might be the parking spot rather than the aircraft we'll just uh, assist her slightly yeah I think we're too close to the yeah there we go we're too close to the land so the parking spot there is actually kind of useful because it puts you in a place where you're not going to start drifting off so let me keep the condition low here for a second while I try the parking brake and see if it does anything it does not okay would have been nice if we had an anchor function like the beaver. Let's bring this down to the very tippity tip 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 of the lake. One notch of flaps here. Power back to idle. Let's bring the condition back again. We'll need every inch of water here. And we'll turn it around. Let's get my head working here. Part of my brain's trying to use a rudder uh, toe brake, and that's not going to help me in the slightest. This is going to be confined. Aim for the lowest uh, obstruction, so not the trees. Five and a half thousand feet, water takeoff, short lake. Let's do this. Let's see how she behaves. Oh god, water is still down. That's bad. Pull those up. Okay. Come on, uh, up we go. Thank you. A little bit of a hop, but not terrible. Could have been worse. I was in a hurry though, so I was being imprecise about my correct pitch angle down the water. I was trying to keep it about the, uh, the plane, but I had to get going fast. Put the flaps up there. We'll stay at altitude here. We'll turn around over the valley. Down below, way down below there. <laughs> and we'll come back in again. So yeah, we're at 5,700 right now. So uh, the air's a little thinner, which means less lift. So you have to be a little bit more cautious about how one uh, uses what runway one expects. You're going to use more. Let's bring her around here. God, this is a stunning view. Look at that. My God. That is absolutely breathtaking. Power back. Flaps in. Everything's full forward. It's almost like doing a carrier water landing because the ground rises up so quickly towards the aircraft that we're going to be in real trouble. Full flaps power to keep a, to move our aiming point here try and keep the wing level if not slightly nose up so we're descending losing energy this is gonna be interesting I might make a new uh, pathway through the trees over there more power A little less power. A little less power. To idle. Whoa! <laughs> Reverse. Flaps up. Kill the lift. <laughs> ah, that was unconventional. I'll give it that. Oh, hello. My water rudders are up right now. Why can I steer you so well? See, now it's in. And now it turns. 
Interesting. See? Turny, turny, turny. Turny, turny, turny. You hear the water rudder go back up again. But I still got... Oh, it's probably because I'm getting so much airflow over the rudder that I get a... Well, hmm. I'm still moving, so I still get some authority, but I don't know why I get this much turning authority. That's water rudders in. I don't know why I'm getting that much turn authority on the water with... Are we planning on turning around? Are we doing that? There we go. She's turning around. Anyway, we'll just stop out here on the lake. You know what? That's perfectly fine by me. Kill the engine so we're not getting forward drift. Why am I going backwards? My engine's off. That's mildly strange. I could have said weather veining, but that's not weather veining. Either way. Oh. I like it. It's going to take me some get used to getting... Uh, it's going to take me some getting used to and learning. But uh, I will do that at lower altitude on bigger patches of water than this. I don't think I'm skilled enough as a float pilot to get in and out of this in a smooth, beautiful fashion. Not yet, at least. I'm going to have to learn because this is a really fun lake and a real challenge. Porter phase two? Hmm. I like it. Angel's rest? Really like it. This is a challenging little airport. And uh, hopefully you guys have a wonderful Christmas because I won't post another one until just after. But thank you for watching. Have a wonderful holiday and I'll see you soon. Bye.